Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the very first uh, weekend prep and review for 2021. I apologize if anyone has been waiting for these. Um, I doubt I have any followers like that, but um, it's been a crazy little year. Um, and so um, for 2021, I plan on being a lot more consistent with this and bringing more value to the trading community. So, and uh, to get started, so the first trading week you can see right there, I have one red day and uh, two green days. I didn't do any trading on Friday. And that brings uh, to the a total for the week of $952.50. Not too bad right now i'm just uh i always tend to take it slow into the new year i don't know why i just uh, like to see how everything's going to shake out especially right now with all the crazy politicalness going on but uh right now i'm just gonna for this month i think i'm gonna aim for about a thousand a month and hopefully go up from there by the end of the year i would like to be making about five thousand a week well we'll see if we get there or if I get there anyways. All right, so the first trade on Monday uh, was 3M. So I entered 11 days until expiration, 175, 180 bull call spread, which is a debit spread. Um, for 225, I did end up getting stopped out when the market um, was flushing down on, what day was that? Whatever day that is. When it um, flushed down, it got below the 34 EMA. I held it, which is usually my stop, but there was support that I was saying it was on hold. But once it popped up, I held it and uh, see if it would pop up because the rest of the market was rallying. If it could get above the 21 EMA again, I was going to hold it. But it couldn't, it was rejected. And when it was rejected, I went ahead and closed it for the loss. So I'll stop up there, and I'll review why I entered it, because whenever I was entering it, it looked pretty good, but that did not happen. Also, um, also something else you may notice is uh, my risk right here is going to seem a lot bigger than it usually does. So I usually put anywhere from 1000 to uh, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 max loss in a trade. But what I'm going to be doing this year when I journal... I want to put, for where it says initial risk, I'm just going to put the total amount for a max loss. I usually put where my stop level is. And um, that's good and all, but sometimes things kept against you. But I wanted to see how it will look if I just put my total max risk and we can see, evaluate risk parameters that way. And so, like you see right here, after um, commissions and everything, you see I basically lost... Uh, 69% on that trade. All right, so the reason for entry. All right, so this is the multi-squeeze indicator. If you're not familiar, the first time you're watching these videos. So these up here on the top, if it is uh, red, that's a mid-compression squeeze. Black is a low-compression squeeze, and this gold color is a high-compression squeeze. And what a squeeze is, is when the Bollinger Bands compress within a Keltner channel, which is basically a one ATR value. So the Bollinger Bands measure volatility. That means compressing within a one ATR range. And what we're looking for is that volunt vol bleh, excuse me, that volatility expansion to compress. And when it starts to and the Bollinger Bands start to compress out of the Keltner channels, that's when you start to get your squeeze firing. All right, so those are the type of squeezes, and all these are different time frames. So we got monthly, weekly, four-day, three-day, two-day, as you count. Those are hours, minutes, all the way down. Now, red means bearish momentum. Light blue um, means that the bullish momentum is slowing down, and the light blue means bullish momentum is pushing higher and you'll be able to see examples of that here in a minute and when it's yellow that means 
that the red momentum is slowed down and it's starting to curve back up. So when you look at this, you can see that there is pretty much bullish momentum, correct? In the one minute chart, that is just a lot of noise. I don't really pay too much. It's red. I don't really care because it's going to go red and all over the place quite a bit. Now, that was what's happening on the multi squeeze indicator. Like I said, right there, bullish in all time frames. All right, the 10x bars. All right, so it does look like a flag formation. So I drew my trend line. We're above it. We broke out above in the five minute. And I entered around this time. I was like, all right, so we're going. Okay, so it's a bull flag formation. We got above it. Looking like we may take off with the market going at that time. And all right, this is a weekly wires indicator. So I I sold near the H1. H1 is this first one, so it's basically a high level one right here. It's H2, higher level two. And if you look at this, let me find it. Okay, so in a rolling two week period. So 269 two week periods, which is basically five years. It touched H1 47.4% of the time, closes above it 33.3% of the time in a two week period. So that means there is a 47.4% chance that it could go up and touch this level. Now, do I need it to for a max profit? Yes, but even if it was just to come up to like right here, stop at this resistance level, that's still a profit. And so that is how I pick my targets. And this one is just showing the same thing, flag formation, stack DMAs. And I just use that to look at all the moving averages. All right, now here is the squeeze. So this is a squeeze setup. So I'm focusing on the squeeze. I didn't really pay too much attention to the 10x bars because this is a squeeze play. It's a squeeze setup. So, all right, we've got the early in indicators on the candles, which is those dots indicating that the squeeze that has been happening for a long time down here in the week of the chart may be firing soon. So we have all the stacked EMAs, right? There are the eight, top of 21, 34, 55, so on and so forth. All right. So we've got a mid-compression squeeze. Blue histogram starting to curve up. And what we're looking for is for it to basically do what it did right there. That would be nice. So it was looking for like a flag formation breakout with a squeeze firing. Uh, with a squeeze on multiple time frames, and all the, time, all the time frames were bullish. So the probability of it going higher was there at the time. <laughs> All right, and it obviously did not happen. Like I said, it looked, uh, when I have the trend line drawn, oops, that was not a pretty trend line. So I did, uh, All right, anyways, the, Got this big bullish engulfing candle, like I said, and it couldn't reclaim the 21, so I stopped down and took a loss. All right, so that is the loss for the week. So that's, I entered it on Monday. Tuesday is when I closed it, which is right there where I had the, the $611 loss. And then I open trades in Square, Etsy, and Snap. And you may notice these also now saying new trading plan. I want to make a video over my new trading plan that I want to utilize going into 21. I made some tweaks when I changed some things and see how that works out from reviewing my trades and what I feel would make uh, more consistency or better consistency 
and um, greater winners. All right, so Square made a 10 day expiration uh, 227 50, 220 bull put spread for $3.70 credit. As of right now, you can see that I have closed half for 370. I'm holding um, half of the position. I closed half of it for 50% of max profit. Now I move my stop loss to break even. That doesn't mean I have an active order waiting. What it is, is I will um, watch the price. I have an idea of where um, price will start to be at the break even point. And I will monitor it and have alert set. And then if it starts to get there, I will just uh, close it for a smaller winner because overall will be a uh, small winner to a break even type of trade. All right, so the setup. Once again, so bullish momentum across all of the time frames, right? All pretty much blue. It's a very blue looking thing. The only difference is all of uh, there's not a whole lot of squeezes, but these all larger time frames have fired, which is good. That means the momentum's already pushing higher in the larger time frames. Sorry for the ugly arrow, but the larger time frames always succeed over the lower. And this one, we also have green 10x bars pretty much across all large time frames. So when I have all bullish momentum on the squeeze indicator, I have all green 10x bars on all time frames. It tells me the um, price action is pushing higher. So now the what I was going to hear, so it was obviously going up. Um, pulled back to support whenever we had that big sell off day it still just held and closed on that candle and I entered on this next day right there so it's a typical um, breakout to support test and then you look for a higher move And I entered right here. So on the day I watched price go up. So price went up, it's chopping, and then this big candle happened, which was also support. This orange line right here is VWAP, the volume weighted average price. It held, and when it held, I entered that uh, position. All right, this one just for my um, moving averages, and I can get everything pretty much all on one page. So it's at the 91% high of its 52-week high channel. My EMAs are stacked. Um, I can't get my VWAP stacked um, indicator in, in the first week because we don't know if it's stacked because um, of the lack of information. But still looking great overall. All right, squeeze. This stock be squeezing. So it's been firing forever. Momentum has been up forever on the weekly chart. Pullback, that support level was also the weekly AEMA, which is that yellowish line. Stacked EMA is on the weekly. Bullish momentum on all the large time frames. Right now we have a little squeeze right there, only two days worth. And then the four hour, you see we came down and tested the 55. And momentum is starting to move higher. So we're looking for that slingshot. So it's going, this is going to round and go. And this 30-minute uh, chart will help show you just what I've done so far. Is I have, I entered right here as basically a flag. Entered right there. Closed half on this candle, and I sold half of the other one. And just to help give an idea on how credit spreads can work, I could come over here. Pull up square, and the last tab. See, so I have two positions left. So... Not familiar how risk graphs work. Keep your eyes down here when I move the mouse around once I unlock it. But first, I want to explain all this. So this is the price or profit loss. Here is the um, the zero line, your break-even line. 
This magenta color is for the current day. This turquoise, or not turquoise, but this blue line is uh, at expiration, which would be on January 15th. With all that being said, right here is current stock price. Every day that passes, this line is going to get higher and higher and higher to my max profit level. So now, I already closed half of 50%. I locked in $370, I believe is what it was. Now, I have a stop loss or break even. I can let this ride to the end of the week and still collect. Let's see. Remember to look down here. So I still have $740 on the table. And all I need to do is let it uh, ride out. And the chart now looks great. It's up here at resistance. Remember, I entered on this candle. Now it's all the way up here. And now we just got to see if it will stay above. What did I sell again? The 227.50. So 227.50. We can do this. <laughs> Sorry if you keep on hearing the uh, weird little breaks or sounds in the video. My uh, two-year-old is keep on trying to run into the room to disrupt me. You probably hear him screaming in the background. <laughs> um, but this uh, 227.50, this, as long as price is above this level going into Friday, then I can collect that $740 still. That's not still on the table. Anyway, so that's how that will work and play out. That's how I intend to play it as well. So that's square. <clears throat> All right, Etsy. So I got a 10 day sell expiration 177.50 to 172.50 bull put for 257. Um, this is a green 10x bar play. So basically what is happening here, all right, going across larger time frames, going up, pulled back to the 34 EMA. I entered when the price was near the 21 EMA. Whenever price dropped to VWAP, and you see I was consolidating right above it, I entered. Sell me um, volume is, or is being bought up at that price. The same thing here, you see how everything is, I mean, EMAs are stacked, um, stochastic, stochastics are saying it's a buy, don't know about VWAP yet because it was the first week, so looking for that to hold, hopefully go higher. It is still kind of consolidating right now before it takes off, hopefully, if it takes off, there's no telling if it's going to. But yeah, you see it's starting to move. All right, Etsy. Whoops, let me go back to that. I believe that was it. Oh, nope, still got Snap. All right, Snap. I got a 10 days expiration, 53.49, bull put spread for 242. I've already closed half at 50% of the max profit, and I have my stop loss move to break even as well. All right, so right here, like it says, price test is support right there and held. Starting to move back higher. And once again, we're in the 90% of the 52 week channel. Stacked EMAs. Don't know about the stacked VWAP yet. And, and uh, oops, sorry. All right, it's a good, I uh, believe this is a 10x bar play. I don't believe this is a squeeze play. I don't think there's a squeeze on it. Yeah, that's a 10x bar play. All right. So, as you can see, larger time frames are green. These are green. And the intermediate, so this might be a good time to explain. So what you would like to see is the five minute turn green. If they're all different colors and then it goes, that would turn green and rotate just green, 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 and then it's all green, right? Ideally, that's what you'd like to uh, find. So it's green in larger time frames. 
I was watching this five minute flag. It went over, it broke out, but I wanted to watch it get it back above VWAP. All right, so sorry, I had to pause it there for a second, but like I said, I entered at the top of, I went over, got up above VWAP. All right, monthly component control is something I was looking for. So this blue line right here is last month's monthly component control. This one is this month's. And as time goes, it'll move up or down or right here. But it's here right now. Went up, and right now, we're sitting on the weekly. And I'm looking for it to maybe drift back higher. And all right, entered here on this candle. I closed half. The same with this one, as uh, as far as the credit spread thing goes. I closed half. It still has room to go. It's got, I need above fifty three for it to be max profit, and I only have whoops four of them now. So, still have a thousand dollars ish on the table, and we'll see where it goes from there. All right, I P. I closed this day. I didn't really. Uh, I know I haven't gone over this one. All right, so got my 15 days to expiration. Bull call for 115. Kind of uh, we have higher to mid time frame squeezes with bullish momentum and things uh, starting to turn. So this these tell me that um, they're starting to turn and go bullish. So I'm looking for these blues to go and turn this blue. And then while these are going blue, this will go yellow and these will go blue. And that's with all these squeeze start firing. That's what I was looking for. I call it a, da a daisy chain squeeze. All right, larger time frames, mainly all green. Um, as you can see, it's consolidating with an Atenix uh, play, so I won't focus too much on that. Once again, right here, they can see they're. Uh, We're at the top of the 52 week channel, stacked EMAs, VWAP was stacked positive. Right here, these are the weekly wires. Sold this H1 level. And in the 267 two week rolling periods, it touches. H1 roughly 46% of the time, closes above it about 31% of the time. And with a squeeze, it looks like it usually pop up there. That is the idea. I'm So the definition of a squeeze could also be used as a greater than expected move. So you could also use a 2 ATR, but I'm looking for high probability consistent returns this year. So what I'm wanting to do is just be able to pull anywhere from 2 to Two to five percent a week, and then uh, just keep compounding it that way. So I'm going to aim for basically two percent a week. So that's why I'm not swinging for the fences. The point is, is to make my weekly goal and go ahead and move on to the next trade. All right, so weekly chart, testing the AMA almost looks like a little, whoops. A little flag, early in, early in signals right there. We have the mid, um, the low compression squeeze, mid compression squeeze, and you see it's starting to rotate higher. And on the four hour, you have all these early in signals. Momentum is blue, so we're looking for it to take off, right? 
And it didn't initially. This did end up being a winner. But it did. So this one really t uh, tests us um, patience because once I entered on obviously those candles right there, chopped around, chopped around, and then finally we got that pop up to 53. And let's just see, did that, uh, is that way up there? So that did end up going through H1, could have gone all the way up to almost H2. But like I said, it's a game of probabilities. And I ended up closing half at 63 and the last, last part of it at 73% um, of the max profit. And then on uh, Thursday right here, I already told you, or went over SQ and Snap where I closed half. So that's all of the trades and the review for the week. Now we'll go ahead and start scanning for setups into next week and evaluate the sectors and the overall market. So let me go ahead and pull all that stuff up. All right. Something I haven't gone over with uh, in the YouTube videos is so I do a top-down analysis where I rate the overall markets and then uh, rate the overall sectors from strongest to weakest and then I look for bullish setups in the strongest sectors and bearish ones in the weakest. So um, I use a negative one to plus three rating. So negative, uh, sorry, negative three to plus three. So negative three, negative two, one, zero. So the more negative means how bearish you could be, the more positive, like three is like a very directional bullish move, two, one's like a up to sideways move. That type of thing. And it's all based off of the 20 SMA and the 50 SMA and how they are relative to each other. So if the so the 20 SMA is this um whoops, where's my little I guess that's weird. It won't let me write and if this little pin is clicked, but whatever. All right. So this green line is a 20 SMA. This blue one is the 50. So it basically goes, how are they stacked? Are they stacked positive? Yes. So that is a uh, plus one. Now is price above um, the 20? Yes. So that's another one. So that's two. Now, is it... Uh, What's the angle of the slope? Is this the slope of the moving average is going higher? Yes. So now that's so that's three points, right? So then you get a plus three. But if they're like if the moving averages are crossing, then that's how you can get zeros, stuff like that. It'll make more sense as we go through these. So obviously, slope of the 20 is going higher, 50 is going higher. We obviously broke out right here too. Um, hopefully this doesn't turn into a hanging man candle. But, so it looks like a 3, right? So price is above the 20. Let's check. They are stacked positive. Check. And then now the slope is going higher. Check. So boom, 3. So I also got... This little thing right here. So we can keep track of it here. Boom, 3. All right. Now we'll go to the cues. All right, so we finally broke out of this 1272 extension. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right, broke out. All right, let's we'll see what we got. It's above 50, 20, press above 3. And I have, as you can imagine, with the way the whole market's been, it's going to be, a lot of these are going to be threes. All right. Above, above, above three. 
So this basically tells you the market is very strong and you need to play, be mainly bullish in your portfolio. IWM. Three. Four. Five. And I don't really rate the VIX. I look at it oops, as a way to mainly see how it's going. But if you look, it definitely looks like so it's, it was forming a base here and we got below it. So it's a low base breakdown. If you look at the other videos where I have bearish continuation patterns, it looks like a low base. We had a swing low, consolidation, close below, now we make a swing lower. Another thing, too, about those consolidation plays, like what is a squeeze? The squeeze is a consolidation play. Now we can go over to the squeeze and see that the VIX is about to fire to the short side and go, further, go lower, which would push the market higher, if that does happen. So, everything is saying to be bullish, correct? All right. Now we'll go through... The sectors. Now we're going to see what's strong. XLY. Consumer discretionary. That is clearly a breakout in running, but we could also expect a pullback sometime. We've got greater than the average volume. Above, sloping higher. Looks bullish to me. I would give that a 3. Real estate. Real estate has been weak lately, but we'll see where we're at. All right, we are below the 50, and it's below the 20. That's still a negative. I got it. Well, I'll go negative. At least a negative one to two. I'll go negative one. Now I'll explain why here in a minute. Negative one. The reason a negative one is because the market is really strong right now. So a rising tide lifts all boats. It's still going to kind of, it won't give you that kind of momentum you're looking for on the way down. But you can definitely see that it is uh, trending down. Like there's, there's no doubt about that. Like it's on a channel going down. This is the 200 SMA. And it is all the moving averages are kind of just sideways. But let's see, what color is the 10x bars? They're yellow. So I go negative one, I think sounds good if you wanted to put on some type of bearish play for a protection of some sort. But that support of the 200 does kind of look concerning, but there's easier trades out there, so I will leave real estate alone. Utilities. Below the 50, sitting right on top of the 20, stagnated. So, okay, let's do this together. All right. So they are stacked negative. It's negative one. It is in between them, so that's a zero. And moving averages are going sideways, zero. So it's a negative one, which makes sense because... Utilities is a defensive sector. Money usually floods there whenever there's uncertainty in what's going to happen in the market. So with the market going up, it makes sense for utilities to go slightly down. Telecom has been looking good. All right, 50, 20, boom, three, easy. Next, uh, I found a few good trades in there already. Next time, I will do some scanning. With, actually, we'll do some scanning again. We'll see what pops up. So disregard what I was just saying. All right. I'll just... Boom, boom, boom. Uh, I'm going to give that... But it's not really breaking out, and it's, it is showing weakness compared to others. I'll go with the two. And in the end, does it really matter? No. Like, because the setups are, I'm going to be doing the same. I'm not looking for huge swings. All right, next is healthcare. 
which would be cell D. Obviously running, I imagine, with the whole COVID vaccine shenanigans going on. Stack above. Just broke out. So, obviously a three. Financials. Okay, way up there. Once again. Bam, bam, boom. Definitely high. It's extended. Wait for a pullback, but it's all a three. All right, next is energy. All right, got the 50 slipping up, 20s kind of going up. Still give it, obviously, a three, especially after the election, all this volume that is coming in right there. I will. I'll give it a three if anything pops up in that sector. Next is industrials. All right, I've got the 20, there's 50, 20 kind of sideways. It's still kind of consolidating. It's want, it looks like it wants to break out. I bet it's going to squeeze. Yep. It's going to squeeze. Momentum's barely turning blue right there. We're just starting to. Right now, it, I'll give it a two, but if, if this squeeze fires, you can definitely start finding threes in industrials. and materials obviously a breakout I mean that's a three 50 boom that was a long consolidation and finally the break three so as you as you see basically all of the market is strong oh, we gotta do consumer staples and I believe that is SLP Yep. Now you see we can't really quite get out of this box, can we? I guess I'll leave it there. It seems to be helpful. So we're on the 50, below the 20, and they're stacked positive. So we got a 1 because they're stacked positive under the 20, so that is a 0. And then it is kind of Moving or price action is kind of on sideways, so that is a one. All right, and what you can do with this information is you can go to scan. So this is where I find. Uh, oh, if you look right here, these are my scanner settings. Like that, so low compression squeeze where prices is between the 8 and 34 EMAs and the price has been 10% of the highs. So if you run the scan, that may actually maybe in. So these are what pops up. And so go, we'll go Twitter and Honeywell. We'll look at those real fast. So, All right, it's in between the eight and, or sorry, in between the 34 and eight EMA, so near the 21. Starting to squeeze. Definitely be something worth the watch. Kind of looked like it was trying to form a cup and handle, but it also looks like a sloppy one because it's testing the support level. So. There, so cup, break, test, and hopefully it goes. Um, I'll definitely be putting that one down to watch. Where are squeezes on watch? And I'll go over all I'm watching. What was that? Twitter. Uh, 
Honeywell. All right, we got a stack DMAs. Compression's trying to turn around. High compression squeeze. It's on the 21 EMA. This is, uh, well, when is? Ernie's on the 29th. So you can do a two-week play on it. If you wanted to do some type of vertical, credit spread, debit spread, whatever your poison is. I definitely like that one, so I'll probably to do that one on Monday. And tap. All right, green 10x bars going on. It's consolidating. Oh, price is barely below. It's extended. Uh, it's a little extended for me. So on to the next one. I'm not going to mess with healthcare with the whole COVID stuff going on. And I have enough that I'm watching anyways. So I'll go ahead and review with you what I am watching into next week and we can do this this simple way so i put sector right here so you could look at your at the little excel spreadsheet and be like all right what was strong what was weak if it's in that strong sector then you could continue on or you could go like what's another one so consumer discretionary was doing really strong right what if we took away the 10 percent of the highs here, industry, discretionary, all of them. So we're looking just in that strong sector. All right, we got LVS, UA, WIN. So a lot of the tourism uh, stocks. Consolidating. Oh, that's not the right one. Anyway, so consolidating stack DMAs. Momentum is positive. It, this is a dark blue bar, but we can see what happens. Still looks strong. I may even consider that one. I imagine these are being strong, especially with all the vaccines going out. What else was there? Yeah. All right, I feel like I already have a lot to look at or to keep an eye on. So we'll go ahead and I'll break these down what I'm watching. So I got my four right there. What I'm going to do is pull up this one. This is, like I said, my weekly squeeze indicator. Okay, NVIDIA. It looks like a huge daily uh, flag formation. Possibly Blake. So it's been consolidating forever in a squeeze. Once it starts to turn blue and break out, that looks like a good one to go. And CB. Actually, you know what? I don't know why I didn't think about this. Well, I clicked the attach. Where did it go? Well, let me find that here in a second. All right, well, sorry about that. I literally have no idea 
What happened to that? <laughs> when I clicked attach, I thought I'd be make another little window that I could use, but it did not. So CB, I was watching this one a few days ago, and it, I missed an entry near the right here. But I'm waiting for this. It's on a pullback to the AMA, maybe a little flush in the morning. I catch it again. But this looks. Uh, Really good, so it's in a squeeze. Barely starting to turn blue, early in indicators. Good on the weekly. All the time frames are starting to turn blue. But it's a nice solid trade right there. Right, cost. Squeeze, momentum is starting to turn blue. We're under the 34. If we get above the 34 near the 21, looks like it'll be a solid entry. I'm going to try speeding these up because this is starting to take a while. All right, squeeze. High compression squeeze on cake. Cheesecake starting to move up. Got above the 89 over here on the weekly. Consolidating. Boom. Boom. Squeeze. Just repeating it over and over. This one's just strong. If you catch a dip, then ride it higher. That was eat. All right. Remember how telecom strong? All right. We've got mid compression squeeze, momentum going higher. Looking for this one to fire as well. So we've got T Mobile. I bet all the other ones are just as good as Verizon. Verizon, not so much. That one's showing definitely uh, relative weakness. And what about. T-Mobile, or not T-Mobile, but AT&T. That as well. So, all right, never mind. T-Mobile is just the one to roll with. Okay, so that's all the squeezes. Now, the 10x bars, what I do with these, so momentum is going higher. I want it to come back down, and I'll enter it, and then go um, write it up. I was watching LB for his breakout. missed it, but now it's all green, so wait for a pullback and write it. So these are basically you wait for a pullback. Same with CVS dish. This one is just turn green. And then if I get a, I'll go over here to 30 minute. I like to I want to see it consolidate. And I get a 30 minute buy arrow, which will look like this. And then I will ride that one higher. All right. And now. Telecom as well, like you know, like so squeeze, stack DMAs, start a slingshot higher, maybe that one goes. And then we also got a daily buy arrow. So that means what the daily buy arrow means, it means it broke the 21 bar low, which is this purplish line. So this candle pierced it, but now this candle got above it. So that is telling you what you would do is you could buy at this candle and you could have your low below it. And then you could, or your stop below it, and then you could have a good risk reward to go higher. So this one really looks good. I'll probably um, eyeball that one for Monday as well. And that is all the trades that I want to be watching for uh, tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, but uh, Monday. And then uh, tomorrow I'll be making a short video over the small account challenge to give an update on that. So um, I'm going to do that one all the way through the year and see where we're at, where I started off with that $240. And hopefully, maybe, hopefully I'll be happy with 5000 but we'll see. And if you have any um, questions, please write them in the comment section below, and I will answer every one of them. And if you found this video helpful, please uh, like it, subscribe, share with your friends. If you have any recommendations, please let me know. I know this one was uh, pretty long. I'm trying to be more detailed in these ones, more helpful. Because I feel like in my prior ones, I kind of just talked too fast and maybe wasn't very clear. So I'm trying to take a step back and add more value to this instead of just running through it. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Have a great night and stay safe.